Hey guys, it's Land Blake with Refine Horizons. Got my white bars and my dry erase markers ready to go here. This is a Field Survey Friday video, another video in that set of videos that we're doing to help people understand and execute field work and help some of my office techs that don't get as much time in the field understand what we do in the field and get, get ready for their CST exam. So I'm going to, I'm going to do, I think more than one, probably It's going to be a, a, a couple, maybe a few videos on just some total station operations. Okay. We're going to cover the basic total station operations. I have another video I did that just walks you through a couple videos that kind of walk you through uh, the total station equipment, the actual hardware and tells you about how an EDM works. So check those videos out. Uh, we'll try and remember to link to them in the description. So in this video, we're going to cover just one basic total station operation, and that's what I call station setup. Some other folks may call it some, some different things, but that's what we call it here at my shop, station setup. So that is when you get to your survey site, your job site, the very first setup that you're gonna do. So we're just gonna do one video that just talks about how that operation works. Okay, what we're gonna talk about is, is the geometry that's involved, a little bit of the math and the procedure. We're not, I'm not telling you in this video how to level a total station, that, that there's other good videos on YouTube about that. So this is like, actually, what is the procedure that, that's happening? What's the math that's happening when you do a station setup? Okay, so let's look at an example. To keep things simple, we're gonna assume that we have two known points that, that are intervisible, that we can see between on the site. Okay, so we're gonna just call them RH1. So that's RH control point number one. Okay, and to keep things really simple, we're gonna just make RH control point number two. We're gonna pretend that it is exactly due north of RH number one and that these points are 200 feet, 200.00 feet apart, okay? And then we will talk a little bit about, well, what happens if you don't have two known points in a site? I'm not sure if we'll get to that in this video or not, but we will talk about it. Okay, so we're gonna go out with our total station and we're gonna set up the instrument and we're gonna level the instrument on RH number one. Here's the little symbol I'm gonna use to represent the total station. Now, we are gonna set our backside on RH number two. So we come down here and we set up our backside. That's the symbol I'm gonna to use to represent our backside. It's supposed to be a rod with a prism. Don't laugh at my, don't laugh at my stick figure survey tools, okay? That's a 200 foot distance there. Just don't wanna forget that. All right, now, what we do is we set up the total station on one and we level it. Okay, so now we've established a level field. Okay, we've established the level plane at our instrument. Okay, but what we wanna do in a total station is we wanna measure angles and distances. Now, you could immediately start to turn and sight the prism with your total station and shoot distances and you'll get good distance values, okay? But you're not gonna, you're not gonna get good angle values. And in a total station, we need both. We need both good angles and good distances. Now. How do we get good vertical angles? Okay, the vertical angles are easy because when you level the instrument, the instrument, when you level it, it knows which direction up is. It knows plumb line, right? And if you remember from my previous videos, instruments in a total station are measured from the plumb line. They're called zenith angles, okay? Then the instrument converts those to what we call vertical angles, but they're zenith angles. That's the raw measurement, okay? And when you, when you level the total station, you establish the zero line for those angles. It's straight up. This is the plumb line. That's your zero line for angles, okay? When I say the zero line, I mean, what's the line, the reference line that you use to start to measure your angles? So the vertical angles are easy. When you level, level your instrument, you've established that line. It's the plumb line, okay? But horizontal angles are a little bit tricky. So with horizontal angles, you have to tell the total station what your reference line is for your angle measure, your horizontal angle measurements, what your zero is, okay? So when you've sighted that line in your total station, you should be reading zero on the horizontal circle or 360, right? They're the same. Okay, so if you remember from my other video, I told you there's a horizontal circle in the total station. You can imagine it kind of like a protractor or a dial. It's a disc, okay, and it's got little tick marks on it, just like a protractor. Okay, now this isn't what it really looks like inside the total station, but you guys, this explains the concept, okay? And let's pretend that one of those tick marks has a zero on it, okay? This is on the horizontal circle inside the total station that you can't see. Now, 
When you first set up and level the instrument, zero could be any direction. We don't know. So what we do when we do a station setup is we side our back sight. Okay, when I say sight, I mean we get the back sight in the crosshairs. Okay, and we actually push a button on the total station, and that button says, make this line right here between RH1 and RH2, make that my zero. Make that my zero line for angles. We're calling it set and zero. We set zero on the back sight. Okay, so what we do in that, in that essence, in essence, what we're doing in the total station is it's spinning this little dial, hypothetically, till it, till it lines up zero with the two marks and then it sets zero. Okay, now let's say we've got another point. We've got another a point over here. This is RH number three. Okay, now when we turn our total station, the scope, we swing it to the right and we sight RH number three and we measure, we hit the measure button. What we're gonna get is we're gonna measure this angle from RH one to two to RH three. We're gonna measure this value. So this looks like it's about 93 degrees, okay? But that 93 degree value is based on setting this line from RH1 to RH2 to zero. Now, let's just say we had another control point over here and it was just absolutely perfectly due west from RH number one. So this is RH number four. Now, let me just change the scenario. Let's say that instead of citing RH number two and setting our back sight to zero, Let's say we couldn't see RH number two, or maybe it got destroyed by the contractor, because that happens a lot. So RH two is gone now. Okay, but we can see RH number four. So we side RH number four, and we set zero. So this is our zero now. Okay. But that means this angle is going to change. It's no longer 93, because we've got a new zero line now. We've got a new back sight. So now, this angle to me looks like it's about 183 degrees. The angle value changed because the backside changed. Now, here's what's important. If you're a surveyor and you've done a little bit of coordinate geometry or you've drafted and you've worked a little bit in CAD, it doesn't matter whether we cite RH number two with a 93 degree angle or RH number four with a 183 degree angle. As long as we have the right point number assigned to the backside, the coordinate we calculate for RH three is gonna be the same, the northern easting elevation we calculate for RH number three is going to be the same whether we cite RH four with 183 degree angle or RH number two with a 90 to three, 93 degree angle, we're going to get the same coordinate, right? So one of the things this teaches you is when you're doing a station setup, there's two very important things. You want to always make sure you set zero. Now on some older instruments, you could actually forget to set zero, but most modern instruments make you, they force you to set zero. Okay, so don't forget to set your zero, and then you want to make sure, number, number two, that you've cited the correct point, and number three, that you put the correct instrument point and backside point in your total station or your data collector. Because here's the thing, if we've, started, if we've actually physically cited the prism at RH2, and we set zero, but we put RH number four in the data collector, it's going to dork up our measurements, right? So you need to have all those things correct. You got to have your setup point correct. You got to have your backside point correct. You got to physically cite the correct point. And then you got to remember to set your zero on your instrument, okay? So once you've done that, once you've set up at RH1 with your total station and you've leveled it, now you've established your plumb line for your vertical angles, okay? You cite your next control point, physically cite it, get, get the crosshairs on the center of the prism, right? Set zero in your station setup. Now you're ready to turn angles and, and distances, horizontal angles, vertical angles, and slope distances to all the other points in your survey. And that is a station setup. Okay. Now, let's talk about you're going out to a survey for the very first time. And so there is no control. That happens. Okay, so what do we do then? Okay, so let's let's do a similar scenario. So we've got this point. Now we just set it. We set a rebar and a cap and we call it RH number one. Okay, but we don't know where it is in relation to anything else. That, that's all we know, it's RH number one. Okay, and then we come over here 200 feet and we set another rebar and cap and we call it RH number two. Okay, now we don't know what the distance is between these two. 
horizontal or slope distance, we don't know. We don't know what that distance is. Okay. And let's say we've got, we go ahead and we set this over here, this will be our 60D. We're going to set another, a 60D nail over here for RH number three. Okay, so we don't know either of these distances yet. We physically set the points, but we haven't measured between them. So we don't know either one of these distances. Okay, and we don't know what this angle is yet. We don't know. We haven't measured yet. We don't know what that angle is. All right. Angle, question mark. Okay, so what do we do? We want to know how these three, three control points relate to each other. Okay, so here's what you do. You get your total station set up and leveled on RH1 over the point. Okay, and we're going to assign it some dummy coordinate. Okay, so a lot of surveyors will do 5,000 for the northing and 10,000 for the easting. Okay, northing and easting. And it doesn't really matter what these numbers are. You just want them to be big enough not to be negative, usually. Okay, so it could be 20,000, 30,000. Doesn't matter. It's arbitrary, okay? It's it's make believe, it's made up. And now, you still you've got so here's our instrument at RH two. Here's our prism pole and prism, our rod and our prism at RH number two. We set up on RH one. We level. We sight RH number two. Physically sight the prism. Put the prism in the crosshairs, okay? And we're gonna do what's called an angle only or a direction only back sight, okay? So we don't have a coordinate for RH two, okay? But what we tell the instrument is we say hey. Treat this as some direction. You pick an azimuth. Could be any azimuth. I usually pick north. So I, I say total station, this is north. It could be south or west or east or 32, azimuth of 32, doesn't matter. But I tell it, I usually tell, okay, that's north. Okay. And then I tell it, I, then you tell this total station, set that to zero. And then you measure this distance. So you measure this slope distance. Okay, so now, now we've got this slope distance. So I can erase the question mark. Okay, so now we know what this slope distance is and we know what the horizontal distance is because we can calculate that with a vertical angle, okay? Now we've, now we've also filled in this reference line. Let me use a different color for that, okay? So now we've established the relationship between these two control points, okay? So we know the, the slope distance, the horizontal distance, and we've told it these two Control points, that's my zero angle. I'm going to pretend it's north, whether it is or not. And now, I turn to RH3, and I shoot the prism at RH3. Okay, now I know this distance. So I know this slope distance and horizontal distance. We can calculate that. Okay, Because I've got that vertical angle. And now, I know what this angle is. I know what this horizontal angle is because we've measured it. Okay, once I've done that, I can now calculate the northing and easting for RH number two and the northing and easting for RH number three. Now we have those values in our total station or our data collector, right? And the next time we come out to the site, we're going to have some known values that we can check into. We need to do another video that talks about what, total, what it means to check into a point with the total station and take a check shot. Okay, but what I what I wanted to demonstrate is the process is essentially the same whether we know the values of RH number one, RH number two, and RH number three when we get to the site or we don't. If we don't know the values, we still are going to pick two points, set our back site, tell the total station that's zero, that's our zero reference for angles, and we're going to start measuring angles and slope distances, and we can calculate these coordinates. The total station has the on the software on board, or the data collector has the software on board to do this math. Okay, so that is station setup in a total station, and you have to follow those procedures. You have to level your instrument over the point. You got to sight your backsight prism correctly. You got to use the right po instrument point number and backsight point number in your data collector or your total station, right? And you have to shoot the slope distances to your backsight and your foresight. If you do all that correctly, you can perform a survey. But if you dork anything up with the station setup, all the rest of your data from that particular instrument setup is going to be corrupted. It's going to be it's going to be broken. Sometimes you can fix it, sometimes you can't. The key is get a good station setup. You don't want to dork up your station setups. You just 
Everything you do after a dorked up station setup is, is essentially wasted time, right? You don't want to do that field. So that's a station setup. Now there are other ways to do a station setup, so we haven't talked about it today. Okay, but this is this is what I would call the traditional station setup. Okay, you can also do what's called a resection. I don't love them, but they are sometimes needed. Okay, so they're a method of last resort at my, my shop. So we'll do another video and talk about what a resection is. Okay. And then we'll just talk about how you take a side shot, what a traverse is. Um, there's two or two or three other uh, total station operations that we'll talk about. Okay, but I, hopefully you guys, that'll help you understand a little bit of the math and geometry. Okay, what I might do, maybe we'll do a video and just show you what happens when you make some common mistakes in a total station, how that how that changes your geometry and how you can identify, identify those problems. But I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching. We'll do some more total station operation videos. I'll release this on Friday, Field Survey Friday video. And uh, don't forget, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. You get notified when we post our other videos. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.